The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman, early bird special. This is 8.06 in the morning. Usually it's 12.06 in the afternoon. Uh, this will be recorded. I'm doing half an hour. And uh, we've got the Dow yesterday closed at 29,232. The futures at this particular moment are up 89 at 29,300. That's a good sign. Why? When I did my webinar last Thursday evening for my subscribers, you can go to the front page of TFN and you'll be able to check it out um, uh, if you um, want to try my opening call newsletter for a month. You'll be able to get that webinar. But I discussed exactly how where there is a dark cloud cover, news cover, that is not the candle, but the news cover, how the market responds is so important. Look at this. We've got, you know, just yesterday we had Apple down sharply. We had uh, the, the, the coronavirus, but the market just kind of shrugged it off in a certain way. And today it's up. And that's what you want to see. That's a response. That's a good response in the market to um, dark cloud news cover. So. Uh, up 88 in the futures. The E mini ESH20. Uh, yesterday, the SP closed at 3370.29. The futures up 975 at 3379. This is going to be very interesting because the, N, uh, the NQ, the, the QQQ, the NDX100 trading vehicle, um, had a really good session yesterday. The high on the 17th, it was to be in uh, Friday. Friday was. Uh, on the NQ was 9687.50. The following day, it's 9687.50, uh, same thing. And yesterday's, uh, today's high so far is 986.00. I mean, that's incredible, right? Look at the QQQ, the Q's, the index 100 trading vehicle. Trading right now. Let me just get rid of this for a moment. Right there, uh, trade traded um, up on Friday to two three four point ninety three. Yesterday it went to two three four point eighty six. That made a peak C. Sorry, that was Thursday. Friday it had a lower high. And yesterday it had a higher high by a fraction, 235.70. But it's trading right now, pre market at 235.80. So um, this is leg D. So all the others are only at a B or a C. This, in fact, is in leg D. It's a little extended in the lettering in the Chapman Wave methodology. Hey, wait a minute. The IWM even had a rally uh, yesterday off the load, hit the 14 period exponential moving average in the daily, and then rallied sharply higher. And now it's up 0.54 at 168.08 pre market. That is, this is at 8.09 in the morning. Um, we'll see what happens at 9.30 when the market opens, because this is a good response to possibly uh, negative news. Okay. What happens to the gold? Gold had a really good session yesterday. It's up again today, 7.5 at 16.11.1, up 7.5. So this is getting closer and closer. Look, look, look. Let me just squeeze this to the 16, 18.9 high that was made. I didn't even put the date because I didn't think we'd get there so quickly on the 8th of January. Very nice response. Now, the question is, is this an E or is this a C? C says you should go to D. I'm calling it a C, the MACD cross positive. Stochastic is at 77%, not 80% 80 but still very good. On balance volume is very strong. So gold is acting very nicely and it's acting in response to perhaps world, world tension in terms of the coronavirus, I don't know what it is, but it's acting very well. That's all you need to say. And look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart had a, a candle that suggested at best it should make a rectangle formation. That's exactly what it's done. If it climbs into the 1620s, 
that's kind of a breakout. Not only is that a breakout, that, in, that increases the uh, monthly chart to a leg D continuation into February. It means that you can't get a peak D until March. So, so far, this is very good action. Now, let's go to the uh, dollar. Dollar was holding extremely well. Should have a little bit of a pullback. No, nope, it's up three ticks at 99.48. Uh, I'm wondering if there's not going to be some kind of little doji candle right here, and then we get some kind of consolidation in the dollar if gold is going to continue higher. But this is a spectacular move for gold for the dollar. Since it made a low of 97.35 back on the 31st, remember the ugly 600-point down day, coronavirus day, uh, Friday, January uh, 31st. Since then, it's had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 higher highs, one red candle, still with a higher high, hasn't made a peak. This is a single leg A or an F to the upside. But the, I would have said it's probably an F if you um, looking at the technicals. And I looked at the technicals. Well, the stochastics at 98.24. You never get to 100. 99.80 maybe is the most I've ever seen. Uh, no, 99.50, I'd say. I don't know if I've seen it even higher than that. So this is within 1.76 uh, of 100%, which it never gets to. But flat, flat is good. So that says the dollar is the currency of, of, of import. This is the one that's, that's most important at this particular time. And it's, it remains so, and this is very good action. And then if you look at the euro, EUR, USD, the euro is... Um, trying to form some kind of a base in a leg after the downside. Can it? Well, it's got two weeks in which to uh, get back to the arch formation of the, you know, the Chapman Way methodology, the uh, week of the 4th of uh, October. 1.08792 was the low, and it's trading right now at 1.07994. Is that correct? Am I correct? 1.87. Yeah, now it's at 1.79. Yeah. Not good, not very good action. And the USD JPY, the, the Japanese yen, holding okay, not doing so great. Oh, <laughs> yesterday it wasn't doing so great. Today it's a big move up, 110.51. I was wondering why I didn't do that yesterday. Did it today. Leg B, uh, sorry, leg C to the upside. Nope, 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 don't say that too quickly. This is A, B. Yep, leg C, double C to the upside. Very good. Acting well, he has your rectangle formation just as we had in gold. Let's see if it goes to the upper part of the uh, rectangle formation. Let's see if we can get to the 111s. All right, I want you to look at question about palladium. Well, let's look at platinum. Platinum strong move up, up 18 at 1,012. This is leg A. This is leg B uh, in the daily, the monthly chart. Uh, sorry, the weekly chart went nicely over the 200 period moving average to a peak deep pullback to the 14 period moving average. Now it's way above the 200. This is good action. And leg D in the monthly chart uh, is still in, intact, and that makes the 1003 to 999 uh, the support. The palladium, let me just look at palladium, P A L L. Yep, this is also breaking to the upside. Very strong move, 246.40, up 12. 258.99 right now. I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, early edition, 8.14 in the morning. And pre-market, the futures are up. Dow's up 82, and the S&P is up 9.25. I'll be right back. Love to take your calls. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so high grade copper is at 2.60, it's down a fraction. It hasn't really been rallying all that well. But if you look internationally, wood, which is the iShares of the Global uh, Timber and Forestry ETF, let me just type it in here. WOD um, <clears throat> has had a really nice rally off its lows back in the uh, 52 area. It's, it's it rallied up to about 66. It's trading right now at 6413. Uh, it's a good sign that it's starting to show some signs. Uh, this is global, right? So together with copper, I want to see copper running strongly. So the question that Dan Dennis had put was. Um, uh, but why is platinum? Palladium shooting up. Inflation is showing, question mark. So this is exactly a point that I've been just pondering over the last couple of days over the weekend, for a while actually, but certainly over, yeah, last night especially. And um, I was thinking, how will inflation show uh, itself? Will it be just in one little area? Will it be a whole bunch of things come together? Will it be something that we're not really looking at? And all of a sudden we say, hey, wait a minute. There's a lot of inflation here. Well, does it go um, through? Is gold telling us there's some kind of inflation, or is gold now more a fear hedge about just the global, with the coronavirus, the slowing down of the economies, et cetera? Is that, is that a possibility? Um, the fact that palladium and uh, platinum are rallying, that's a, that's a good commodity sign. The fact that we are looking at um, Yields so low says no. You can, this is not real. Inflation goes. I think inflation goes straight to yields. That's that's the, for me. That's the inflection point. You can see it in other areas, but it really is shown when you start to see yields start to uh, to move quite sharply high, much sharper than the average that has been at for a long time. So that's got a long way to go. Now the other thing is. The commodities, if you look at the dollar TRCCI, which is the, uh, this is the Reuters, it's actually Thomson Reuters Equal Weight Commodity Index, and that's trading up six right now at 409. This is a nice leg B, but it's coming off a low back in the 394 area. Um, it had a low back, well, first of all, the high that was made was back in 
This is an important high that was made back in May of 2018, up at 443. It, it was even higher than that, but I'm talking about the last high. Then it plummets down to the August of 2019, though, of 374. That's a big move. But then it has a beautiful rally, and it goes all the way to 424. That was at a peak Dean the Chapman wave on the 3rd of January. Then it pulls back. To, this is, these are big moves for the commodities, down to the 394 area. Announced at 407, running strongly. So I think what we're looking at is that the commodity sector is starting to show some signs of um, buying pressure. Let's call it buying rather than the selling pressure over and over and over. I think we're now seeing some signs of buying pressure. That's important. If you look at the soft commodities, look at this wheat, does wheat, um, down seven today after a really strong move yesterday at five. Let's go to 560. It's just stuck in the lower part of the range. It needs to get to 576. If you look at soybean, uh, soybean, uh, uh, this is the continuous contract, down today, down six and a half at 885. It was looking good. It got stuck. I said it's stuck in a little bit of a range here. It needs to get to the 903. Yeah, 903 area to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to rally further. It's now stuck in the low range. And corn is just stuck in the range at 381. It just hasn't gone anywhere. Stuck between 384 and it's, say, 376 for now. So that part of it says nothing much to see here. So at some point, we're going to see a yield scare. That might not be the actual big move in yields. Later, I think in 2021, kind of my thinking right now, that's when we start to see yields uh, move in, in, in the upward direction and don't consolidate. They just keep moving in a stair-step fashion. That's my thinking at this particular point. I think we have to wait until then or maybe later in the year. Uh, so let's get that. And let's look at crude oil. Crude oil right now is trading at, oh, that's up. 77 cents. There's another inflationary thing. Crude oil trading down in the 50s. Nothing to see here. Starts to get to the 68, 72 area. That's completely different. Will it do that? I, I'm just wondering if later in the summer there isn't a chance for, for uh, crude oil to, to spike higher. I just, at this point, I don't see all that much. And if you're looking at um, so that TLT, so that is yields. This is a T bond uh, down 21 at 145.33. I spent a little time on this saying, is this going to be a new leg B to the upside or old leg E? I'm going to give it another day because the MACD hasn't crossed positive yet and the stochastic down at 57. There's room to go to the upside, but at the same time, this is not showing technical support, it's showing price appreciation. And you've got the cup formation. My target is the 149 area at some point in the next uh, month or two. But at this particular stage, let's see just how it goes step by step, um, putting back just a little bit off their big move yesterday. Um, so what do we say? Yes. So that uh, Paul in the den says uh, 98, 99.46 on the continuous contract I got on the dollar. Just holding well, I, I think it's very close to at least a bit of a pullback. But look at the weekly chart, 84% really strong move in the in the stochastic the weekly chart. Look at the, the difference. I've always wondered what's it's a differential, but what it's not a beta or a theta. I don't know what it's called. I keep trying to find out what is it when you get a very wide distance between the exponential moving averages in the MACD. There must be a name for it. Wide, very wide. All right, I prefer one word, but two words is fine. Very wide, and that's usually a big boost to the upside. And it says you've got a lot of support now in the dollar in the 98.81 to 98.30 area over the next uh, two, three weeks if there's a bit of a pullback in the dollar. Now, the next thing I want you to look at is I did that, did that, did that, did that. Yeah, look, the SMHs up 2.21 pre market and 150.64, made an all time high of 152.62. I keep talking to uh, a couple of people and looking online and, and reading about the semis, and the billings are not that great. And yet the price is the way. This is like the dark cloud news cover. You got a dark cloud news cover on the fundamentals in, in semiconductors, and yet look at this, look at the performance uh, holding so beautifully. I look at applied materials, uh, applied materials made. I, I'm calling this an E for now, but wow, 
66.30 pre-market. Maybe that's an E slash B. I better be conservative and call it an E slash B because they do not let go. And as long as you've got you've got buying pressure in the semiconductor area, I think that's going to be good for the market. And I do believe that based on the Chapman Wave methodology, let me do this now, that we should get a leg C above 29.568 in the um, in the Dow for leg C, and then there should still be a Dean if there's a buy mode, which I believe there is. The S&P should go above 3385.09 for leg C. It's less than the Dow to, to, to make the new all-time high. The QQQs have already gone to a leg D, so they're already there. Um, and that's a look at the New York Stock Exchange, NYA.x, here we go. The New York Stock Exchange needs to get really above 14,183 to, to, to break out to a leg C in the weekly chart. So, oh, this is it. You're going to go to uh, Tommy O'Brien. Tommy's going to do, Tommy's going to do his show. He does a fantastic job. Half an hour coming up, 8.30 to 9 o'clock. Then, of course, you've got Larry uh, Pasavento, and I will, my, my show will be recorded today. I'll be back regular time.